Good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Uh, I'm going to give it two seconds, see if anybody jumps on, and then we're going to dive straight in today. I'm just going to take that off because it, it's an Apple Watch and I don't love it. <laughs> Bad irritates my wrist, something shocking. All right. So today I want to start off by apologizing to those of you who are waiting for last night's live. Um, I was all set up. I had the tripod set up, everything ready to go. Um, and then I got sidetracked finishing off a couple of pieces, grabbed my bag, walked out the door, got home and realized that I had completely and utterly forgotten. So I do apologize. Um, I've never done that before. I feel like a complete idiot, but <laughs> I was so occupied doing those um, coffee tables. It just slipped my mind completely and yeah, no. So I apologize for those who missed out yesterday, but I'm here today. We're gonna do the same thing today. So a little bit of a Q and A today. Um, I get some really good questions. I get a couple of questions that I get asked all the time. And then the last just couple of weeks, actually, I've had some really interesting conversations with a few who have come here into the studio and a few who have, who have called or emailed. Um, so I thought, let's answer a couple. So if you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments. I can see your comments today. Um, and if I miss them during live, I will circle back around and um, answer them in the comments after the live today. Uh, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Elise. I'm the owner and the artist behind The Painted Brush & Co. We are located at 37 High Street, Eaglehawk, um, in, uh, in Bendigo, Victoria. Uh, you can also find us online at thepaintedbrush.com.au. So I've been in operation for five years, but I've, I have over 15 years of experience um, within the industry, although for a very long time there, it was just wood tech at school and then bits and pieces here at home. Um, so I've done a lot of, I'm, I'm a very crafty person overall, but um, I've sort of been floating around the industry for a long time. Although for a long time, I didn't realize that the furniture painting and furniture flipping industry here in Australia particularly was as big as what it is. Uh, so it's been amazing, just even in the last 12 months, meeting so many of you um, here locally and like our customer base has grown significantly. So it's fantastic seeing so many joining the industry and just having fun and, and trying something different. Um, so for those of you catching up, let me know in the comments. This will also be posted on our YouTube as well, which is just the Paint & Brush & Co. Make sure you subscribe on our YouTube as well well it's the red button it just lets youtube know that you guys are interested in our content and then hopefully they share it with other people too all right so i thought while we answer some questions today i'm going to i'm creating another little display for here in the store um using pure eco's staining glazes and as always i forgot to grab a jar so i can show you what i'm talking about have a couple of these so I already have a display for the regular colours, the Whisper, which is the white, Driftwood, Storm, Midnight, uh, Sable, Carob and Sepia. So I've already got a display for that, but um, I don't have a display for the coloured glazes, which are really, really beautiful. Uh, so I thought I would create one today while we're having a chat. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know um, either way. But these are just two of the colors. So we've got denim, which is this beautiful blue. It needs a bit of a um, mix, that one. And this one's mermaid. They also come in periwinkle, which is like a really soft purple. Cur it's wiped off, of course. I want to say cranberry. I'm sure it's cranberry, which is a beautiful red. Uh, we did those two. And petal, which I've actually used. Petal's a really beautiful pink. So, and I've just got these little... I did a little bit of shopping accidentally the other day and I found these. They're um, like appliques and they're timber. So perfect for the stain. And I also wanted this sort of detailing so you can see how it sort of sinks in and helps highlight a little bit as well. So that's what we're doing while we have a chat today. Um, so I've got my little sheet here with a few questions and a couple of points that I wanna talk about. Um, and these are questions that I get asked all the time, but of course, if you have any other questions, let me know. Driftwood, I can show you. All right, so these are the traditional colored stains. So we've got Whisper, 
this one's driftwood, uh, carob, sepia, sable, storm, and midnight. So midnight's black. So this is all one coat onto just a pine board. And then down here shows it as a glaze as well over paint. Uh, these are just appliques, these are resin appliques that I've painted. This one's carbon, but all the rest, it's actually just one coat of basin blocker. Uh, the timber squares, I actually found these ones on eBay. Um, so these ones I found on eBay, but it took, this was like hours of me, because I'm always on eBay, it's just what I do. Um, it took me hours to find them, um, and I can't even remember what search term I ended up using. I knew roughly what I wanted, but it, it took me a while. Um, but I'm certainly going to see if I can find possibly a supplier of them. Um, I really, really like them. I love them for pieces. Furniture here in Australia can be quite boring. So I think some little details like this is good fun. These, they're called appliques, timber appliques. Um, but I think they came up under something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. I can have a look later for you though. All right, so we're going to start doing those and let's have a chat. All right, so probably the most commonly asked question I get asked, commonly asked question is where do I get my uh, furniture? So I get this, I get asked this daily. Um, and the answer is everywhere. Um, I am, um, I started off when I very first started flipping for profit. Um, I started off with pieces of hard rubbish. My husband and I loved hard rubbish. He used to do hard rubbish when he was up in, um, Sydney. He grew up in Sydney. And then when we moved to Melbourne, well, when I moved to Melbourne, he was already there. He introduced me to it. So we went out every weekend and we found pieces. So hard rubbish is a great way to find some beautiful pieces. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, um, auctions as well. We've got a lo local auction house that's quite good. Um, there's a few auction houses. They're sort of spotted around. Some small towns still have them um, or smaller cities like Bendigo still have them, but they, um, auctions are a really, really great way to get it. But I definitely recommend sticking to your budget, going to a previewing if you can, um, just so you have an idea of what you're looking at and really inspecting the pieces as well. I, I have been caught out a couple of times getting pieces that I thought were in better condition than what they were. One was riddled with um, bugs and one was completely falling apart underneath. Um, so I definitely recommend inspecting every single piece that you get, um, particularly if you're not um, skilled enough or familiar or confident enough to um, do any massive repairs as well. All right, the first color we're starting with as well is denim. I'm gonna bring it closer so that I don't. There we go, this is denim. Yes, yeah, the rubbish that people have left outside on their nature strips. Um, a lot of councils now are turning to booked pickups only, but for a long time there, particularly in Melbourne, it was quite a large culture where it was um, set weeks that a whole area um, would put out their rubbish and then there's some fantastic pieces and all of these pieces they are being crushed they're going straight to landfill they are not um, being saved in any means uh, council are sending them straight to the tip so um, they're a great way to save some furniture from landfill and um, you can get some really good pieces as well so well worth it um, good fun as well, always spotting a piece in a pile. All right, so this one is, what did I call it? Denim. <laughs> so this is a stain, it is translucent. So we're just going to brush it on and I've just got a little tapered tip brush. So um, yeah, so I get pieces everywhere. Um, I get asked all the time, like, do I set a budget for how much I'm willing to spend on a piece? Uh, am I, like, how do I work out how much to spend on a piece? Um, for me, I'm pretty strict in how much I spend. Very rarely, and normally I wouldn't say this, but very rarely I spend over $50 for a piece. But in saying that, there are some pieces I will quite happily spend more for. 
um, because I know that either I can ask more for them once I've done my thing, or I can um, either sell them as is with very minimal repairs. It really depends on the piece, but I am quite strict. If a piece, and this is really important for auctions as well, um, if, if it goes for too much, it's not worth it for me. I do, I, I don't do this to make money. So I don't do the furniture flipping side of things to make loads and loads of money. Um, I never have, never will. I, although I do price, I think some people say it as high end. Um, I also think my time, my effort, my techniques, my knowledge is worth something as well. But I have never flipped furniture as such to make millions. Um, but in saying that, I do like to make sure that my, um, that, that the cost that I'm putting into a piece is kept at a reasonable um, price point. As low as possible, obviously. Um, making profit is where I'm at. Um, I obviously do do this for a business and I need to be able to, to support the business, support my family as well. There's no point in me spending an absolute fortune and then just not making any um, money because that's just that doesn't make sense. But I do, particularly if you are just starting out, I do recommend set yourself a budget, an affordable budget for yourself. Um, don't pay attention to my budget. $50 might be too much. $100 might be too much for you. Work out a budget and stick to it. I think it's really, really important. Um, and don't buy every single piece that's out there. I don't have a massive furniture, furniture stash at home or in a storage unit or anywhere. Um, I have upwards of about five to six pieces at a time. I work through them. At one point, absolutely, when I very first really started and getting into it, I, um, I did have a massive stash, but that can also be extremely overwhelming. So don't go crazy, work, it, work through your pieces. Otherwise, what happens, you tend to start hoarding pieces and then you get a new piece that you wanna do and then those older pieces just sit there and it sort of just becomes a bit of a cycle. So I do recommend taking your time. Take your time, enjoy each piece as you get it. And now I pretty much, I, I buy once or twice a month. Um, I do attend a local auction, I do attend another auction um, further away as well occasionally when I need to, uh, but I don't have that big stash anymore. What I buy, I work on immediately. Um, and that's also just reducing my overheads a little bit as well. It means that I'm not, I don't have a shed full of pieces um, and the shed is pretty much primarily my husband's, um, I won't say crap, but crap now. <laughs> um, since I've moved here to the store, he has well and truly taken over. It didn't take him long. Um, but it just means that I'm not taking up space that we could be used otherwise um, for us personally with the stuff that's just sitting there. That's that's costing you money. Um, so that's where I'm at. I know some furniture flippers, You, a lot of you um, also work through a lot more pieces than what I do. You flip them a lot faster than what I do as well. Most pieces take me um, up, to, up to about a month. Um, I, I am quite slow simply because I have so much on my plate um, and I don't do it, like I said earlier, to make money. I do it because I enjoy it. And if I'm not enjoying the process um, of transforming a piece, there's no point in me doing it. Um, I do it for the, I do it for my own mental health. I do it uh, to relax. But if I'm not enjoying it, I'm just, I'm not enjoying it. And you will notice, um, if you watch my page, um, you'll notice when there's just, when I'm not listing anything for weeks or even months at a time, because they're the points where it's just gotten a bit much and I'm just not enjoying that process. So, and I am finding now, particularly in the last 12 months or so, that having that smaller stash, not having massive amounts of furniture, um, definitely makes, a difference for me as well. It's not this big daunting pile that I have to try and get through. Um, and look, I do buy some pieces and then sell them on as is. Um, sometimes I sit on it for a few weeks and then I decide, no, I don't want to do it. And that's fine as well. Um, but I do try to buy really good quality pieces as well, wherever, wherever I can. 
but I also take on pieces that need a lot of work. All right, we have a question. Too much to pay. Well, for me, it really depends on the piece. Um, obviously, I am trying to do this for a profit as well, but for me, I won't spend any more than $100 for a piece that I am going to flip. If it is a piece that I am selling as is and I know what I can get for it, um, I am willing to spend a little bit more, but generally, like I cap it at 150. I have never paid more than 150 for a piece, um, and I've only ever paid more than 100 for a couple. So 100 is sort of that sweet point. Now, obviously, I am a stockist, so I do get the products at a cheaper price. So that obviously brings my end price um, or the cost price of my piece down significantly. Um, whereas a lot of you, you are buying your pieces at retail um, or if you're lucky, you get a sneaky discount. Um, so for those of you who are buying at retail, obviously you also need to be taking that into consideration as well. You don't wanna be spending a hundred plus dollars on a piece and then spending say another hundred dollars on your materials and then only being able to ask 250, 300. Um, at that point, you're only making 50, hundred dollars. Now, um, I will say as well, I don't take my time into consideration when I'm pricing a piece. Um, that doesn't come into it for me. If I considered my time when pricing a piece, um, I would be making nothing, to be perfectly honest. All right, so this is denim. So we've covered it completely. It's hard work talking while I'm trying to do something. And now it has dried quite a lot. I'm actually just gonna spray it with some water. It's a little bit fiddlier than what I thought it was gonna be, but that's fine. And the woods really soaks it in. And now I'm just gonna rub it off. I'm gonna step back over here because it's a bit easier. Try not to lose everything. And I'll show you in a second. Um, I don't know where I was at. What was I at? Yeah, so I don't charge for my time as such. Um, if I was charging for it for my time as well, most of my pieces would be over a thousand dollars. And let's be honest, that's not realistic. Um, I am I am very um, big on making sure that my pieces are affordable for everyone as well. And I think that's really really important for me. Um, my my family's still low income. Um, we've been low income. We've been um, we've been quite quite. Um, quite poor and not doing that well. Um, so I'm also, it's always in, my, in the back of my mind, making sure that beautiful furniture is available for everyone and accessible for everyone. So I am quite conscious of what prices I'm asking as well for my finished pieces. In saying that, there are some pieces absolutely, I think are worth more and I do ask more for them. Um, but there are certainly pieces where I will price on the lower end um, just to make it more accessible to everyone as well. Um, I've actually never tried. I don't think I've got a firm brush. Probably not. I think you'd want to, let's see. I've got a few firmer ones here that are, uh, haven't been cracked. No, I, it's sort of just spreading, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's spreading it around and putting it back on the bits where we want it taken off. Whereas when I'm rubbing it, oops, I nearly crushed into you. Can you see how it's sort of just taking that off a little bit? Now, if you put this over silk finish in particular, it would be wiping off easier again. This is obviously over the raw timber, so it's just like a pine, um, and it's it's soaked in as well. All right. Yeah, that's a great idea as well. That can work really well. I wanted to do this for ages, so I'm quite happy that um, I'm finally getting these done. <laughs> Everyone asks what they look like, and I don't have a display. All right. Um, how do I select pieces of furniture? This is a really good question as well. As I've already said, I do tend to select really good quality pieces. Um, 
And I also, I've been doing this for quite a while, obviously. Um, on average, I'm doing between 30 and 50 pieces a year. So I've got a really good idea of what I can sell. So I do pick pieces that are higher quality, but I also pick pieces that have a lot of potential, but are perhaps not that well looked after. Um, I get pieces that nobody else wants quite a lot. Um, I've had pieces that were on their way to the tip um, and I've just messaged in time to be able to get them. So there's, um, I am very selective in what I pick as well. Uh, very rarely do things like bedside tables anymore. Uh, they don't sell that well for me. Um, but for me, price comes into it a lot. Uh, the style of the piece as well. Um, I tend to steer clear of MCM pieces, which are mid-century modern. Um, they sell well as is, but most of the ones that I'm looking at are quite far gone um, and they're needing some love. So I tend to steer clear of them uh, just because for me, I don't think it's worth my time to put into them. And I also find them a bit boring, to be honest. Um, I am, if it's got beautiful legs, beautiful feet, I'm all over it. Um, I love a piece with really decorative carved legs. Um, I'm very, <laughs> anyone that knows me knows how much I love legs on furniture. Um, I think they're quite beautiful and I think they add a really nice, um, intricate detail without being too much as well. So if it's got beautiful legs, I'm buying it. Um, what else did I have written down? Oh, size as well. Size always comes into it for me. Obviously, I'm now here in the store. I don't have a massive amount of room. And my room is a couple of times a month shrunk down even further when we run workshops and when we run our paint and sips. So what I put in here, I have to always have in the back of my mind, is it going to fit? Can I easily move it when I need to for these events? Um, and making sure that it's not taking up so much real estate in here because obviously I'm paying rent for a space. Um, if it's taking up loads of real estate, if it sits here for ages, which it's not uncommon, pieces to sit two, three, four months. Um, although now I must say, pieces are starting to turn over that little bit further, a bit, little bit faster. Um, if a piece does sit for time, that's obviously costing me money as well. So I, I don't do large things like large bookcases unless they're for my display. I don't do buffets and hutches. Um, I do do sideboards, but again, it comes down to can I work around it within the space? Storage is also an issue at home. I don't have loads of storage anymore. My husband works from home. Um, he does electronic repairs and he's a liquidator. So we have a lot of stuff at home. So it's really important to me that whatever I'm working with fits. Um, so large pieces just aren't worth it for me. At the same time, really small pieces, little end tables that don't really, um, that even don't have a pair uh, that could be sold as bedside tables as well. End tables, I don't do at all um, anymore. They just don't sell for me. So it's always in the back of my mind what does sell and what doesn't sell. And I don't want to be stuck with pieces for months. Um, and another thing I also take into account is what colour can I paint it? You guys know, if you've been following me for a while, you know I do not like white. I do not enjoy painting it. Um, I hate the process. Um, and I find it really, really boring. So I'm very particular about what I buy as well. In saying that, last night I did post a piece that was in white. Um, in my defence, it's got about six different whites in it. Uh, because I mix them all together in a dump pot. But I don't do white unless the piece absolutely needs it. And most of the time, if a piece is really only going to sell in white or it's only really going to look amazing in white, I won't buy it. I won't do it. I got those coffee tables um, because they were priced really well um, and because I just needed... The stores I'm emptying out really fast at the moment. So I just need something that I could flip fairly quickly and saying that still took me over a week. Um, 
but something that I could flip fairly quickly that would fill space as well. Um, and something as well that I can move out the back quite easily if I need to. All right. Let's have another look at that. So that's pretty well rubbed at back and it is, how beautiful is that? So these are really, really nice. So I'm just going to pop a nice light coat on the back as well. Um, the one thing with stain glaze, it dries really, really fast. So you've got plenty of, well, you don't have plenty of work time, but you can keep going quite quickly. So I'm just going to, normally I'd use a sponge, but it's just not worth it for this little tiny piece. I'm gonna spritz it down with some water. It's quite warm in here, so I just don't want it to dry too quickly. And then I'm just going to use my cloth to move that product around. So just wiping in the direction of the grain is gonna help as well. So that's just one coat. So this is the denim. Beautiful. All right, um, what else? How do I select finishes? I get asked this a lot as well. So I don't do white. I only do white if the piece really needs it or if I think it's not going to sell in a color. Generally, I select pieces because I can paint them a fun color um, or I can get more decorative finishing with them. Um, <gasps> oh. <laughs> it's all right. It sealed itself before I dropped it, so that's all right. <laughs> oh, heart attack. Um, so colors really depends on the piece, but I generally don't start painting a piece until I know exactly what I want to do with it. Um, as I said, I do this because I love it. Uh, and there is absolutely no point in me doing this if I'm not loving it. So I wait for a piece to sort of tell me what it wants to be um, to a certain extent. For example, I've got a whole table I'm hoping to start today, Today, maybe, we'll see. What time is it? Hi, right, beautiful. Um, that I'm hoping to start today that I really wanna do green. So I'm going to do it green because that's what I wanna do. Um, I think it will really suit the piece. This color here is ooh, periwinkle. It's this really, really beautiful purple. Um, so I am, I'm very big on not starting a piece until I know what I want to do with it. Otherwise I just won't love it. I won't enjoy the process. I'll get bored with it. And then what will happen is I'll get like halfway and it will just sit there and I won't touch it for like a couple of weeks. So, and that happens a lot. So I am very particular on making sure that I'm enjoying what I'm doing and enjoying the colors that I'm painting as well. I do love color. Um, I think color always deserves a spot within the home. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's fun. It's fun. White's so boring. Even black, although I do enjoy painting black, particularly Pure Eco's Carbon, it can be a bit boring as well sometimes. So even just adding a bit of extra detail or a bit of texture or something can really make that piece fun for me as well. Do I do online workshops? I have in the past, I am considering it. Again, I've had a couple of people ask if I would consider doing it. Those of you who are interested in, in online workshops, can you let me know in the comments whether or not you would prefer um, a just an online course that you can sign up and watch in your own time or whether you would prefer something like a Zoom um, where we can, I can be on the other end talking you through the process, etc. So let me know what you think you'd prefer. Um, but I am, for me, it comes down to time. Um, I'm extremely busy, but it's definitely something that I'm considering doing again. Um, in the past, I've just picked a pretty decent sized piece. Um, I've done a couple of sideboards and I've just sort of filmed the whole process, done lives for the whole process, set up a private group where you could join, watch at your own leisure. And I've just filmed the entire process start to finish and really talked about everything. 
all the extra stuff that I don't generally share, although I don't gatekeep any information. I'm very big on sharing. I love to share. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're interested, let me know. Because I'm always looking for suggestions of what you guys want. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm providing what you all want as, as well. But for my locals, uh, I'm in Bendigo, Victoria. Uh, even I've had quite a few that have come down from Melbourne as well. I do run workshops here in the studio. They're three hours, Saturday afternoons, uh, once a month as well. Uh, so they're a great opportunity to come and learn uh, beginners, basics, but we go start to finish. We cover prep, um, painting, finishing, and it's quite, it's an information overload, but it's good fun. All right, is there any other questions that I can answer? Yeah, definitely, Catherine. Um, white absolutely takes more time. I find a coloured piece is generally a lot quicker for me, but I think it's also quicker because I enjoy the process more, whereas white I don't enjoy. Um, and it generally, white requires more coats. I'm also very fussy, and I find white, um, I can see a lot more imperfections within the paint within the paint job and then within um, within the piece as well that I wouldn't normally see with a colour. So I am, there's lots of reasons I don't like white. I've never liked it. I don't have white furniture in my own home. Um, actually, that's something I get asked all the time or I get commented on all the time that I must have this amazing home with all this beautiful furniture and stuff. And I find it hilarious. And people are always so shocked when I say, no, I don't. Um, nothing in my house matches. Uh, my husband still works from home. I still work from home for um, a good a, a, a good portion of my time as well. Um, our house is chaos, pure chaos. We have two young kids. Um, nothing matches. I have one piece of painted furniture in the house. Um, I don't know how it's held up as well as it has been. It still looks as good as the day I did it. Um, and our dining table, but our dining table is used as a workbench. It is, it is doing pretty good. It's been finished with hemp finishing oil. Um, it's just, I just noticed this week, it's starting to get a bit dry, but it's very rare that you can actually see the surface of the dining table because it's used as a workbench more than a dining table. Um, the kids have their own little table, so we sit in the lounge room for dinners, but my house is chaos. It is not a pretty show home at all. I honestly wouldn't even know how to go about styling it and making it look like a big, beautiful house. Well, it's not a big house to begin with, so that's easy, but it's just, my house is not, not a pretty show home at all. All right, before I start really rubbing this back, this is Periwinkle in the Stain and Glaze. Yeah, it really does. Um, and although I don't have the trouble as much here now, at home, we've got two dogs. Um, we had a cat at one stage. We had a German Shepherd Lab cross as well at one stage. Um, and their fluff is ridiculous. The amount these dogs shed, you can't keep up with it. Um, I ended up buying a robot vacuum because I was sick of vacuuming every 10 minutes because the, the fluff that comes off these animals, let alone the children, um, is insane and white I definitely noticed you, you're gonna see all that fluff in there and it drives me bonkers um, I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I can all of that it drives yeah no can't handle it at all so I am glad I'm here now there's no animals allowed in the store for good reason um, although I don't mind when the occasional one of you brings in your little puppy dogs um, I met some absolutely gorgeous little puppies um, and I'm not generally a dog person, but there's some cute ones out there, so I don't mind when you bring them in. Um, I'm glad they don't live here, though, because, yeah, the fluff, the dirt, all the little imperfections, it shows up, and it drives me bonkers. Absolutely, Kate. I will, um, I'll keep, I'll, yeah, I'll work out some details. I have had a couple of ask um, for a Zoom. So yeah, let me work out some details and work out the best way to go. Would you prefer it 
um, individually, so one-on-one, -on -one, or would you be happy with a group of us? Um, let me know anyway. I've got a couple that sort of want one-on-one -on -one and then a couple that want individually. It's a lot to work out. All right. Um, 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 um. Oh, I get asked um, from other small businesses, both in the painting industry, um, sorry, I just got a message and I just saw the corner of it and I'm hoping it was good news and not bad news. Um, that's distracted me now. Anyway, I get asked a lot, what platform do I use for my website um, and for my, um, my pause in store as well. It was a lot to work out, uh, but I use Shopify. I find it really, really easy to use. Um, I've, my website, I have done completely by myself. I have not employed anyone to do it for me. Um, and I'm generally, I'm quite, I'm quite, quite clever with that sort of thing. Although my husband knows a crap load more than what I do. Um, he really hasn't, only occasionally he's helped me more with the formatting when I've had trouble with the technical side of things. But um, yeah, Shopify, I do highly recommend if you're looking at creating a website. Um, I found them really, really good. Uh, those of you who have been following us since we've started, which was just over five years ago, um, were sort of seeing the website change and adapt as we've gone. So um, yeah, I really, I enjoy the technical side of what I do. Uh, with the website and I love making emails for you guys. Um, I Content, I think the last couple of years making actual content to post on our social media has become so much more than what it was. Um, and I will admit I'm starting to not enjoy that side of it as much. I'm finding it a lot. You've got to be across so many platforms now. Um, I've just added YouTube. I'm trying to learn Pinterest. Um, I'm already on TikTok. I don't get a lot of TikTok though. Um, the content side of things is exhausting. I can quite easily spend my entire day just trying to create content and I still enjoy the emails, but it's um, that side of things I'm certainly struggling with a little bit but it's um just part of business and as fun as it's not <laughs> i don't mind it sometimes but trying to come up with different ideas as well is always difficult so this one is periwinkle so imagine that with one of the pearl sealers let me grab them and show you what i'm talking about some of you probably won't know actually i can show you the exact color this is periwinkle in chalk finish with the pearl sealer over it. So imagine that with that pearl, with that shine. How beautiful would that be? This is my little, I'm slowly getting more, more pieces like this in so I can paint as little displays to show the different products. But how that, that would be incredible over that. Really, really beautiful. But yes, um, content is exhausting is where I was at. Um, I really still enjoy making tutorials. I really enjoy these lives. Um, but it's all the rest of the content. And now Instagram and YouTube and even Pinterest prefers videos over um, static photos and posts. Uh, Facebook, though, is sort of... It's sort of coming across, but it's whole different thing than trying to get it to cross across that or to post across that as well. Um, so that side of things I do, I, I enjoy it to an extent, but there's also times where I just wish we could go back to where we were, where we didn't have to create this massive amount of content. And there are some days I will spend more time creating content than doing anything else. It takes up so much time. Um, so but it's just part of the business. It really is. Oh, there's one coat on the back of the pine. It's a really soft purple. So you could use these all over a piece. You could just use them to add a bit of detail. Um, I have used the petal 
inside a jewelry box just for a little bit of detail i do want to paint it um so stain was a great option as well i'm just going to get some of that off my hands this is all water-based as well so you can wash your hands really easy don't need to use anything nasty to get it off there's no smell at all really really easy to use um what else oh how do i select the products i want to sell as well not just the furniture but the actual products um i have a very strong focus on australian made and owned i also have a strong focus on eco-friendly wherever possible um and like particularly the last sort of five six years um the eco-friendly nature of what we do and in in most industries is definitely coming to light and there's a lot more eco-friendly products available now so all of pure eco is eco-friendly uh, so i am very specific on that and wherever i can i try to source from within australia um, at the moment one product in the entire store is specifically being brought from overseas everything else at the very least is being purchased in australia from an australian distributor um, it may not be australian made and owned but it is at the very least being purchased from an australian distributor so that person that distributor um, most most of the time they are small businesses there's only one that is a larger business um, they are it, it's supporting other small families as well which is really really important to me um, Pure Eco are still a small business. They've only got, I think, the two employees, um, LJ and um, my mind's just gone blank. Yeah, LJ. I don't know. I can't remember. Oh my God, I can't remember your name. <laughs> um, anyway, the two lovely ladies are Pure Eco. They're still a small business as well. So we love supporting them. Um, oh my God, I can't remember. I forgot your name. I'm so sorry. I and mean, you're going to see this too. <laughs> All right, never mind. Right, the next colour we are doing, we're almost out of time because I do have to open the store in a moment. We're open until one o'clock today. For those waiting on Pure Eco stock, it has arrived. Um, and I will be, once we're done here, I'll pop this straight up onto, the, onto our YouTube so I don't forget. Um, but I will... Um, then get all this Pure Eco stock unpacked and up onto the website. So anybody waiting for anything, if you have already placed an order and you're just waiting for me to ship it or to let you know it's in, if you're seeing this now, it's here and you will receive an email or a message shortly. Everyone else, your products will be shipped. And for anyone else just waiting to purchase, all of these stains are in stock. Um, Whisper is back as well. We sell out of Whisper a lot which is the white, uh, for very good reason. It's a beautiful product. But we just, um, yeah, we're finally back in stock. <laughs> Took me a moment this time. This month has been chaotic at best. There's, everyone has those months where every single bill hits all in one go. And this month, every single bill hit. And I was not expecting it. Um, that was a bit of a shock, but that's all right. We're getting there. And then the tax man comes and asks for their money as well. So it's been one of those months. Uh, so I've been spending so much time just doing book work and everything else. It's nice today to finally be able to do something like this and get my hands a bit dirty and just have fun doing something that I enjoy again. And I need little breaks with little pieces like this. Um, I enjoy doing little pieces right through to the larger pieces. But sometimes I just need a little break and doing something like this that's a little bit fiddly but fun and there's colour involved and it's a beautiful result. This really, I really, really enjoy this. And everything I do painting wise and furniture wise, I do it because I enjoy it. Um, pure and simple. Yes, I've got overheads um, now, which I didn't have for a long time. I was just from home. Um, but the actual furniture painting side of things, it's such a small part of my business, but it's also such a big part for me. All right, 
let's finish this one up. I will do, I'll do all of them today. I'll continue them all. Um, but I do have to open the doors. But I will take some photos later showing them all off. I'm a bit excited to show them off because I think these are really beautiful. I've just been a bit slow to get them done. All right, so this one is Petal in the Stain and Grease. How beautiful is that being? Oh, it's showing a bit gray. That's a bit better. Really, really, really nice. It's just, it's reflect, there's a big blue painting just here. It's reflecting off that. So again, nice and wet. I worked a bit faster with this one. It does help when you work a little bit faster with this. I'm gonna start wiping it off. I am going to spritz it with just, a, I, these are the Mr. Bottles, they're $14. Well worth the investment. Um, I've got two of them and I use them constantly. Cheaper than therapy. Yes, it is. It is. It's so much better than therapy. I don't. I'm I'm surprised I can talk as well as I do online, but I am not a talking person at all. Um, I find social interaction very, very awkward. Um, I'm just, I'm generally quite a shy person. I don't like talking to people. If you were standing in front of me, I would not be talking this much. But get on a video and I can talk non-stop. There is a point though where I am overanalyzing every single word I say as well. And I will watch this back and I will overanalyze everything. Just how my brain works. Uh, <laughs> always has. But yeah, I'm just one of those people. I don't want to go and see somebody else. I would prefer to give myself therapy instead. Because the thought of going and seeing someone else scares the living daylights out of me. I really, really like petal. I think it's a beautiful color, both in the paints and in the stain. And let me rub this back a little bit more and then I'll show you. So I'm just using, these are old pillowcases that have been ripped up. These are what we use for our paint and sips. Um, but I use them for everything as well. Rags are good to have. I just want to take a little bit more off so you can keep wetting the stain and glaze as well. And if you watch any of my other videos using stain and glaze, you will notice how much I dampen it. Um, it just reactivates it and keeps it moving. That's better. There's a little puddle just there. I can't get my, I've got really big fingers that so won't fit. There we go. That's better. All right. Let's have a look at this one. This one, it's a little bit harder to see. Oh, no. You can see it not too bad. It's just that little bit harder to see because it's a closer colour to the original pine as well. Let's whack it on the back. You can go in any direction you like for the stain. You don't have to have perfect coverage either. You can just sort of whack it on however you like. Come in with your cloth. I do recommend though wiping it in the direction of the grain, which is the lines in the timber. And it just wipes off some of that excess. Normally you just sort of work that product into it. You'd still be moving some of the excess off. But on a small board like this, we just want to remove a little bit of that excess. There we go. So we've done three today. I don't know where the other one went, but that is um, Periwinkle and, oh God, I can't remember. Um, Petal. <laughs> um, that's, that's why I forgot yesterday's live because my memory is shocking. Right, and the backs. Let me grab denim as well. Where did I put it? Actually, I think out of all of them, denim is my favourite because of that little bit of... Oh, it's sort of not showing it as well as what I want it to. That little bit of contrast. Hang on. So there's our three that we've done today. And I will do the last two in a minute. Um, I do need to hop off, though, because I do have to open the doors. Um, actually, 
actually, I have to go because I've got a lady waiting for me. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone. Make sure if you're watching this on our YouTube that you subscribe. Uh, if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer just about anything. Um, personal, business, furniture, whatever you like. Do I hand paint furniture or spray? I hand paint everything. I do not spray. I have tried spraying. I don't enjoy the process. Um, it was really messy. It used a lot of product and it just wasn't for me. I love hand painting. I love getting up close and personal with a piece. Um, I also feel spray is very production line and that's just not me. Um, I like the hand painted nature of a piece. I also love brush strokes. I love a little bit of texture. Um, and yeah, hand painting for me, 100%. I do roll occasionally, but hand painting with a brush is what I do. Um, but yeah, let me know if you've got any other questions. Thank you for watching. Um, have an absolutely wonderful Saturday. And for our locals, we are here until one o'clock today. And you can also find us online at thepaintedbrush.com.au. Bye everyone.